Okay, hi everyone, this is Creative Fun, and uh, today we're going to do an interesting mission. We are going to do a night landing in bad weather. Let's see how that goes. So, uh, before you actually start the mission, there's a couple of things you want to just want to look up, so you're because you will need them. Number one, uh, it might be very good to check uh, which heading you need to be to land on the Air Force Base you're going to land, which runway basically. So you want to make sure that you're traveling in, be lined up with the airbase and traveling uh, the heading uh, of 95 degrees to be able to land on this airbase. Also, you want to know the RSBN frequency. I already looked that up, and it's 14 for Sanaki. <coughs> you can use the knee pad uh, in the MiG-21 to look that information up, or you can do as I do. I have a, uh, a map with all the information or jot it down for me. Also, you want to know the radio frequency uh, for the Sanaki Koiki, Koiki uh, Air Base, and that's going to be 16 on the MiG-21, channel 16. So, once all that is done, you can actually probably check uh, radio frequencies here. And we check radio 16 and 132, and that's, uh, yeah, 132, that's the radio frequency. So. Good. Once that is done, we press start. And we are now in a very dark MiG-21 cockpit. So I'm just going to do the regular startup procedure here. Uh, turn on all the necessary equipment that usually turns on. Let's get the engine started first. Now, I haven't been able to find the floodlights uh, in this. There should be a button for the floodlights. I just don't know where it is. So. Luckily, I'm quite familiar with the MiG-21 cockpit, so it shouldn't be too hard to start the engine up and get the regular lights on. And there we go, the engine is starting, and we can shut the canopy off. So, uh, landing in dark in bad weather with clouds and everything is really difficult because you need to align yourself up with the airport before you can see it and then try to descend appropriately <coughs> now there's actually quite a few very advanced instruments in the, the MiG-21 to let you do it and I am not going to use too many of them because they're very difficult, takes time to learn and I'm still not quite there with the MiG-21 where I can use all of the landing assist systems efficiently. So I'm going to use a little bit of a simple procedure that works when your life is not depending on it, I should say. Uh, let's see here. We're going to start up regular stuff. We're not going to start up any weapons because uh, we don't need it. Also, as always, be mindful and prepare how much fuel you're going to need to use during any operation. I have made sure that I have enough fuel to get to the airbase, uh, but not much more. I'm going to turn on navigation systems as well. And while the navigation systems are uh, aligning and turning on, we are going to turn on the lighting in the cockpit. Let's see, I think that's, that's basically it. I'm going to turn them off all the way up. Ooh, fancy red lights, nice. And let's see here, uh, we're going to push this button to align navigation. There we go. Now, I think this is a stupid placement in MiG-21 cockpit to have the navigation system right here. Well, I understand the point of having this here, but honestly, wouldn't this thing have been much better having it here so you could actually see them all the time because you kind of need them a lot. But anyway, uh, we're going to align this, and I know now that it's uh, a 95 degree inclination that I'm going to land in, so I can actually set it on my navigation system here. Uh, let's see, we're going to put thick needle on the 9.5, which should be around here, correct? So we need to be heading, we need to be aligned with the airport and then head in 95 degrees direction. To be able to align ourselves up with the um, airport, we are going to um, turn on the RSBN navigation system. And that's going to tell us the distance right here, how far the airport is. And the other needle here 
it's going to point towards where we want to land, basically. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to switch the RSPN on there. And then I'm going to set their RSPN frequency on these two here. And I've already looked up the frequency, and it's 14, or the channel 14. And uh, usually, if you activate the kneeboard, you can do that. But I'm using uh, the 1.5 open beta, and for some reason I cannot get the kneeboard to work properly in MiG-21. Uh, but uh, it should be no more difficult than turning it on 14. And once we take off, uh, the RSPN is going to light up these two lights here, and we're going to hear... Uh, beeping sound that will tell us where to go also I'm gonna use the ATC or the air, air traffic controller so I'm actually gonna turn on the correct channel for the Sunaki Air Force Base which for the MiG-21 is channel 16 so there and before I start rolling out on the runway I'm also gonna turn on the taxi light so I can see I'm gonna see how the landing lights look Probably just a little bit wider. Well, anyway, there we go. So taxi lights on. Let's unhinge. Oh, wrong, wrong button. It's dark. Yeah. Unhinge the. Um, can I? There, thank you. So I can pull up my gear. I'm also going to turn on the takeoff flaps. And. I'm also going to turn on the fishnet because it helps to line yourself up with the runway. So uh, let's let's get going. Let's take off. Now, as you can see, the taxi light does not turn with the nose wheel, it only points straight forward because the taxi lights are attached to the wings, so you will only be able to see directly ahead of you. Let's see if we cannot get out on the Air Force, on the runway, uh, and line ourselves up. There we go. Now, actually, I have turned on quite a bit of uh, wind conditions and turbulence, so we'll see how it uh, pans out. I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna see here. It's so dark. You can see this, but this one here that enables the braking on the landing gear as well, which is very useful when you're landing and want to stop quickly. Uh, you, of course, turn this off once you want to taxi. Okay, I think I am set for taking off at the very least. Now, I'm just going to explain to you my process here because once I take off, I'm going to need to be able, to, I'm going to need to focus. I'm probably not going to speak as much. But uh, my first order of business is just getting above the clouds and, and then uh, aligning myself or heading towards the runway using uh, the RSBN navigation. Uh, once I align myself with the runway, I'm going to start descending. Uh, until I can go below the clouds and get a visual on the runway. Preferably you want to do this with quite some distance left to the runway. So between 30, between 30 and 20 kilometers, you want to you know, have everything set up. You want to be aligned with the runway so that the last 10 kilometers or last 20 kilometers you can just set her down. Uh, if I remember, um, if I'm able to remember when I'm going down, I'm going to switch the RSBN to landing mode and use the PRMG landing mode to help me land. And basically what that is, is that, I'm gonna zoom in here and show you. Uh, these two white lines here, uh, you wanna to try to align them in the middle of this circle here, circle here and circle here. They will uh, assist you in trying to hit the runway, basically. They're very useful for getting sorta of close to the runway, but once you got visual on the runway, you need to stop looking at this because this will only help you to get, you know, within spitting distance of the runway. Uh, but they're not very accurate. So as soon as you got visual from the runway, you need to stop relying on the instruments and use your eyes, basically. That's very important. So uh, 
I will probably just crash badly because I am not very good night flyer, uh, and especially not in bad weather. But uh, at least you know my process, what I'm going to do here, and then it's just a matter of practicing something I haven't done. So let's take off. Oh. There we go. We are almost centering the runway, which is fine, I guess. Use the rudder a little bit to adjust. Shaking a little bit. Let's see. Not try not to pull up too fast. Uh, slowly pull back on the stick, and up we go. Maintain the stick, and let's see if we cannot uh, get the gear up. The gear up. There we go. The gear is on its way up, and I'm still going to maintain a like. 10, 15 degrees climb, get the uh, flaps up, very good, and then we're gonna set the gear into neutral, and oh my god, it is so dark, I cannot for life of me see. Gear lever neutral, that's good enough. Uh, we need to slow down and stop climbing in this rate or we're going to lose engine power. Okay, good. We are now in the sky. Well, we're above the clouds at least. That's great. And we are not climbing either. That's good. We are in a good altitude. And now we're going to try to head towards the runway. Run right to the airbase, Sanaki airbase. Uh, first, I'm just going to talk to them and see if they can hear me. F3. Inbound. Inbound. Okay, they want me to fly heading nine for 23 kilometers and then they want me to turn in for the approach. Let's see here if I can um, slow down a little bit and I have to keep my eye here because the outside is not helping me that much navigating and seeing how I'm doing. So making sure I don't drop too much altitude or lose too much altitude as I turn is important. Uh, this one is very hard to figure out whether you're upside down or not. So, But as you can see here we're getting into this one here and that one is in the middle. That's perfect actually. I think that's exactly where we want to be right now. Uh, heading towards the runway. Now the goal here is to have this thick needle here aligned together with this one at your right. So that means that the runway would be exactly like this. Uh, as you can see I'm showing with my mouse here. <laughs> and uh, then you just turn right until you're facing the runway and then you start descending and hope that you hit the runway before well, you hit the ground. Or rather you hit the runway and not the ground. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna throttle back because I do not want too much speed here. It's so easy to overspeed with the MiG-21 if you just leave the throttle on 100%, even if without afterburner, uh, it will sneak its way up to Mach 1 very quickly. So I will also try not to gain too much altitude. Uh, I'll try to be close enough to this cloud layer so I can easily penetrate it if I wanted to, but I want to stay above the cloud layer until we are in the right position here. So you can see now the navigation system here is helping me to align myself with uh, the runway. And if you look here now, this, this needle here is going to slowly creep its way towards here. And once they're aligned, or when they're very close to be aligned, I'm going to start turning. And when that happens, we hopefully will have the runway straight uh, in front of us. And then it's just a matter of uh, climbing below the cloud layer, getting a visual on the runway, and uh, not dying. Not dying being the important part. Uh, we have, I think, just barely enough fuel to make it without any catastrophic thing happening. But if I start screwing up and not miss the runway or something like that, we're going to run out of uh, we're going to run out of fuel very quickly. Uh, so as you can see now, we are starting to line up with the runway here. So I am going to start a uh, turn. And with any luck, once we are turned, 
I'm almost upside down, that's not good. Ooh, climb up, climb up, climb up. Here we go, there we go, there we go. And we are going below, above, below the cloud layer now. And uh, there we have... Good. Well, let's see if we can find the runway. And there it is, it's right in front of us. Let's see if we cannot maybe land. I'm gonna see if I can take out the... I'm gonna drop the speed flaps. Try not to go above the cloud layer now. Need to maintain a look at my speed. Uh, see if I cannot get the, the small flaps out. Uh, I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Can I get down my landing gear? Very good. And I'm hoping that's the runway. Oh, that's the runway, all right. So you see, it worked. We have visual on the runway. Uh, we are. Uh, approaching it fairly well. We are a good speed and uh, yeah I think this might might just possibly work out. Uh, oh it's directly in front of us now that's actually great. So hey everyone I did it or I haven't done it yet I need to land actually too and that's easier said than done but at least we know where the runway is and uh, we should be able to align ourselves fairly well without using the instruments. Uh, And I see it's actually quite windy. <laughs> I have turned on quite a lot of wind and turbulence, so uh, I'm doing my best now to just keep her steady. And I'm gonna turn on the landing lights. If they help at all, I don't know. Oh yeah, request landing. Field. One, one. Request landing. See if I can turn on the PRMG. So I'm turning on the PRMG now, and you can see I'm, it tells me I'm pretty good lined up with the runway. I, I disagree with that though, but uh, if it, you know, was a lot of fog, this would help me to reach final approach a little bit at least. Uh, let's see now. Here we're going down. We have we're a little bit short on speed. I'm not going to turn up my full flaps because I don't have enough speed for that. Literally, I think the wind is uh, making it very difficult to maintain speed with gears down. So let's see if I cannot bring her down. Uh, at least, well, maybe not gently, but in one piece or two or three pieces would be nice. I would be happy with just three pieces as long as the pilot doesn't die. I'll be happy. We're coming a little bit off here, but that's because of the wind. I really can't just line her up because then I will just go far away. Let's see, there we go. She is fighting me. Now, I have tried this once before, so I know that I'm not, I cannot land on the red lights. I have to wait until the white lights before I can land. And uh, let's see if we can do that. Oh, 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 God. Let's see now. Let's see. Let's see if we can put her down gently. Gently, 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 gently. Let's see now. Oh. Oh, it's getting closer, 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 closer. Come on now. I think one of the landing gears was uh, damaged, but uh, we are in one piece. Yay. Ah, that was difficult. I am sweaty and exhausted just from a couple of minutes of flying. Uh, but uh, we are in one piece on the ground. We kind of skidded out. Let's see, can we see? Yeah, the landing gear seems a little broken. So, but yeah, uh, practice, practice, practice. I made this uh, probably unnecessarily difficult because I turn on the wind conditions and the turbulence. Uh, I should probably turn those off first and practice just getting the aircraft down during night and then switch to. Uh, uh, the more difficult conditions, but the aircraft is in one piece, and just you know, the right landing gear, left landing gear was damaged. So I'm pretty pleased with that since I, I've only done this once before. Uh, I didn't rely a lot on the PRMG system, uh, but the RSBN navigation was really helpful in aligning myself up with the runway. As you could see, I was almost directly in front of it, it was just a matter of aligning the aircraft uh, before touching down. So, well. 
I guess this will count as one of the worst tutorials on how to land during night, but if it has been any help to you, I'm glad. Uh, thank you for watching.